Hey students, so today we're going to look deeper into our paper cut illustrator project. Now, I know I gave you some tutorials, but they might not have worked for really, you know, what you needed. So let me go over what I'm talking about. Now, remember the restrictions to this project are you are creating a biome that you researched and you need to have so many plants and so many animals from that biome, as well as an abiotic material. So like sunlight or water or dirt things like that. So what I'm going to be doing today is looking at a marine life biome and kind of showing you the two different ways that I use to create this technique. So we're going to start new. So I'm going to go to file new. Okay. And remember for us, we are doing 17 inches by 11 inches. We're going to do it Let's say, let's do it in landscape. So let's create it. Okay, we'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see kind of what we're doing. Now what I need open, I need my layers panel. Okay, super important so I can adjust the layers as I go. The other thing I need open is I need my color swatches that I was using last time, which are these guys. These are the beach color swatches. So if you were to go to the top, you click on your swatch library. I went into nature and I pulled up beach. So that's where this came from. Because these are the colors that I want to utilize in my marine biome. Now we may stray a little bit from this co these colors, which is totally fine. But for the most part, I am going to stay pretty consistent with this color palette. So let's begin. Now I'm using a Wacom Cintiq 13 inch tablet, just like we have in class to do this. Um, but you know, you can use your mouse. Now, because I'm using the Wacom board, I find the pencil tool to be a lot easier to use. So I'm gonna be using the pencil tool. So let me walk you through what I do. So I'm gonna start with a basic rectangle in my buck drop. Okay, and I'm going to give it the darkest color. Now to me, this color is still too light so i'm going to double click it and i'm going to go down to make it an even darker version of the color i'm using okay and i'm going to just make sure it fills okay my page now this is my bottom layer that i will end up locking down here in a second okay so that's my first step now what I'm going to do is start to build the, that water on top. Now I'm not going to add any drop shadows until the very end. So just kind of be aware that that's a big part of how we get our effect. So I'm going to start here. So I've got the bottom, let's say this is the floor of the ocean or as deep as we can look into it. And we're gonna to start to build layers up. So my colors are gonna get lighter as they go up. I apologize for the little kind of jump probably in your screen. I had to recalibrate my pen. So it looks like we are good to go. So let's begin. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing is using the pencil tool and I'm, like I said, building up that first layer. So here we go. So I'm going to just kind of give myself a little wave-like pattern that's gonna extend and come around. Now I'm gonna be filling that in with my next darkest color, okay, which is that guy right here. So this one. And then I'm gonna build the next layer. Now, because I'm building on top and making them smaller as I go, you know, it's going to change. And I'm actually gonna do a little wave on this side too. So think of this as kind of like a little ocean river that we're looking into. So this one's gonna be the same color. Okay, and I'm going to work on the next one. Okay, and I'm not gonna cover quite as much, but once again, I'm gonna do like a little bit of a funky wave. Come around and meet up. And I'm gonna go even lighter. Now for our project and our purposes, I've asked that you guys do at least five layers. So we're going five layers deep on this one. So just a few more. 
Now you're going to spend way more time making this look lovely and nice than I am. But for the sake of time, we're just kind of working to get this done. There's that lighter color. Oh, and I lost my shape over here somewhere. Come on, shape. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay. So that's three layers I've built up. Let's do our two more. So I'm not going as far. Okay, lighter shade. And this one. Lighter shade. Now you can spread out your shades if they're not working. You can always come back and change them later. Just do a little one in this corner. <laughs> like I said, I know it's a little crazy, but I give myself some extra space. That way, if I want to come in and like add a layer, change something, or move them in and out like this one, you know, I can move it down or I can grab a different one and move it over. By going bigger, I get more flexibility with how things are positioned. So I could even, let me lock our original layer down so I could grab all of these at once and move them up if I wanted more of them to show and kind of manipulate them just a little bit more. Let me draw it out, make it bigger. Okay, so we've got some good things going now, right now, but I still have to add kind of my marine life, my bi like my biome animals, all of that fun stuff. So what I did is I grabbed just from the internet some stock silhouette pictures. Now remember we're not selling these um, so we can use them to kind of help us out. You can always come in and trace them. But for our purposes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to image trace these super quick. Expand. Ungroup. I'm going to get rid of that white. And I'm just going to grab some things to bring over. So let me just grab the C star. So control C. Cancel, sorry, pressing wrong buttons. Control C, or I'm going to go to edit copy. Come back over <laughs> to my drawing. Okay, edit paste. I've got this nice C star. And let's say that I want to combine it with the shape right here. So I'm going to lock my other shapes. So obviously a bunch of these are too light. Okay, I'm going to grab this guy and I can position them however I want. I can make them bigger or smaller, but I'm going to grab these two together now. See how they're both highlighted and I'm going to merge them using my Pathfinder tool. So I need my Pathfinder tool. If I can find and <laughs> what computer screen it has been hidden from me. Okay, window, Pathfinder, there it is. Hello, welcome back, Pathfinder tool. Okay, and I'm going to merge these two shapes together and I am going to repick the color that they are, which is this one right here. Now, do you see when they merged that they went back to the top? And that's not where I want it. I want them back down you know, on the lower part where I had it. Okay. So I'm going to grab another fish per se. Let's grab this guy. He's kind of cute. So control C, go back to my project, control V. Okay. And maybe he's swimming over here on this layer. So I'm going to be unlocking a few layers because we want to be able to highlight both the layers that I want to work with. So actually not that one, so that guy's got to get locked down. Okay, so lock, lock. And let's unlock the layer that I'm looking for. So this one. So I'm going to put him next to those. 
Okay, maybe I'll change his color first so I don't have to worry about it later. So he can match his shelf. Okay, I'm going to highlight them both. And then once again, I am going to unite those together and move it back down to where it goes. Okay, so underneath. Now I've just added two basic shapes and you're gonna add so many more, but let me show you how we get that paper cut effect. So once we've done our layers, we've done our animals. Okay, I'm gonna unlock everything except for that bottom rectangle because we do not need it there. Okay, and I am going to go to effect, stylize, and I'm gonna drop a shadow. Now because you're dropping a shadow on a lot of shapes at once, it might take a second for like the computer to register, um, which is totally fine. Now all of these things you can play with to decide which direction you want it to go. So do you want it to be more vertical? Do you, you know, want it to be off to the side more? Just know that when you start playing with these things, it is going to take time, especially if you have, sorry, I got a little clip, click happy. And you can see that it's still growing because I accidentally clicked the button way too many times. <laughs> okay, stop, stop, I think we're good. So you can make it look like it's spread even further apart. Now, to me personally, this is a bit much. So let's go back to 0.5 and see how it looks. Okay, that's a little bit better. It's still a little dark, so maybe 0.25. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now, if you wanted to affect these differently, which is probably a good thing, what you could do instead is let me highlight this shapes right now. I could go to effect, stylize, or sorry, stylize up here at the top, drop a shadow. And so I'm only doing these in two batches. And so I'm just gonna click okay with the presets. And then the next time I'm going to highlight this group instead. So I've got this group. I'm going to go to effect, stylize, and I'm going to drop a shadow. But this time I'm going to opposite, offset it the opposite way. Okay, and now it looks like I'm really kind of on top of it and diving into the scene, which I think is a lot more interesting. So I'm gonna press okay. And that is the first way that I do the cut paper project. So those are my personal techniques. So because this video is about 14 minutes long at this point, I'll create another video to show you the second technique. So this is technique one of two.